Good morning. If you'd please remember to pray for the family of Tony Ricardo, who went to be with the Lord this week. This is one of our most faithful families here at Argyle. And I know that they would appreciate your prayers very much. Tony's celebration of life service will be Saturday, May the 20th at 11 a.m. Pat Terry is here tonight. Been looking forward to this for a long time. Pat was a pioneer in the new Jesus music back in the 70s. He's a singer-songwriter who's recorded 12 albums. He's also written songs for country artists Foster and Lloyd, Travis Tritt, Tanya Tucker, Kenny Chesney, John Anderson, the Oak Ridge Boys. And tonight's concert is free, so please come and bring someone with you, 6 o'clock tonight. We continue in our study through the book of Thessalonians. Are you ready? This is part four. Our scripture today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, so you can follow along in your Bible. Every one of us has a choice, a choice to receive or oppose the Word of God. And you'll see that there is no middle ground. Verse 13, this is why we constantly thank God. Because when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as a human message, but as it truly is the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. You know, it was not easy to be a believer, to be a Christ follower, to be a Christian in Thessalonica. The Christians at that time had to face persecution and suffering, and it was all because of their faith in Jesus Christ. But because they welcomed the Word of God, even in the middle of persecution, they were still able to experience a supernatural joy. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. In spite of severe persecution, you welcomed the message with joy. And even though we've probably not experienced the same kind of political and religious persecution that they did, there will be times in our life when we will suffer for our faith. One of our best friends in college was a Jewish girl who became a Christian. And because of her faith, her family disowned her. They said, if you choose to follow Jesus, then you are no longer our daughter. Maybe some of you have missed a promotion at work because of your faith. Maybe some of you have lost your job because of your faith. Maybe you've been made fun of. Maybe you've been left out of things because of your faith in Jesus. And that's exactly what Jesus promises his followers. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. Now, wait a minute. I thought being a Christian makes me wealthy, healthy, and happy all the time. I like that. I'll sign up for that. Problem is, it's not scriptural. 2 Timothy 3, verse 12. In fact, all, and I think in the Greek that means all, who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That's a promise. But regardless of the persecution, the church will stand because the church is founded on the word of God. Now, there's a lot of educated, intelligent people who have poked holes in the truth of Scripture. Yes, And there's a lot of 
intelligent, educated people who believe that the church is founded on the Word of God. The Bible is the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same word that gives us the free gift of salvation is the same word that brings us real life change through Jesus from the inside out. And if the church is founded on anything other than Jesus and his word, it will crumble and fall because he is our rock. Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock, where I seek refuge. Jesus went on to say in Matthew 16, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. The church will stand on the rock of the word of God. Paul was thankful that the Thessalonian church had the correct attitude about the word of God. Paul knew that the word of God would give them the strength to stand strong even in times of persecution. Verse 13. This is why we constantly thank God because when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as a human message, but as it truly is the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. Over 30 years ago, theologian D.A. Carson warned the church against denying the truth and the authority of God's word. Carson said, A high view of scripture is of little value to us if we do not enthusiastically embrace the scripture's authority. But today, we multiply the means for circumventing or dissipating that authority. I'm not here speaking of those who do not, who deny the scripture's authority. It is only to be expected that they should avoid the hard sayings and uncomfortable truths. But those of us who uphold the truthfulness of God's word have no excuse. Even some of us who would never dream of formally disentangling some parts of the Bible from the rest and declaring them less authoritative than other parts can by exegetical ingenuity get the scriptures to say just about whatever we want. And this we thunder to the age as if it were a prophetic word when it is little more than the message of the age bounced off Holy Scripture. To our shame, we have hungered to be masters of the Word much more than we have hungered to be mastered by it. A diminishing view of scriptural authority in the pulpit invariably affects those sitting in the pews. What a preacher believes about the Bible will determine how he preaches the Bible. And how he preaches the Bible will influence how his church responds to what the Bible says. Thus, to be transformed by Scripture, you must trust completely in the authority of Scripture. To some extent, we are all part of the problem. And perhaps we can do most to salvage something of value by pledging ourselves in repentance and faith to learning and obeying God's most holy word. The doctrine of Scripture cannot be met by intellectual powers alone. 
but only on our knees and by the power of God. The church in Thessalonica responded in the correct way to Paul's message. They recognized he was speaking divine truth inspired by God. So they were willing to submit themselves to the authority of God's word. They allowed the word of God to bring real life change through Jesus from the inside out. So Paul expressed his appreciation to the church. Verse 13, this is why we constantly thank God. Because when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as a human message, but as it truly is, the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. In this teaching, we can see three things about the word of God. Number one, God speaks to us through his word. Number two, we must obey what he says. And number three, his word changes us inside out. Our church staff has spent considerable time crafting a mission and vision statement for the church at Argyle. In other words, why does the church at Argyle exist? And the answer is in our mission and in our vision. Our mission to lead real life change through Jesus from the inside out. And in order to lead somewhere, you have to have been there yourself. So we decide to follow Jesus. And he begins to change us. And we begin to share Jesus with others. Only Jesus can bring real life change. And not just the way we look and the way we talk and the way we act. He changes our heart from the inside out. Our vision is to be encouraged and equipped on Sunday to be the church every day in our community. We gather as a church family on Sunday mornings, not just to check the box for coming to church, but as we worship together and as we pray together and as we hear God's word together, we are encouraged and equipped to live for God during the week, wherever we are, blessing others. Church is not a place we go. It's something we are. The heart of Argyle is to be gospel centric. That means that the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is center in everything that we do. That Jesus died on the cross for our sin and that he rose again from the dead victorious over sin and death. That we can repent of our sin and accept God's free gift of grace through Jesus, our Savior. The heart of Argyle is to be gospel centric. The heart of Argyle is to be outward focused. That means that those outside of our church are more important than we are. We bless others in the name of Jesus in our community with no strings attached. The heart of Argyle is to be changed inside out. And that means that every day we're growing in our spiritual maturity to have the attitudes and the actions and the heart of Jesus Christ. Mission and vision are very important. But even more important is that our mission and our vision must be the same that God has for our church. His mission. His vision. And God's mission and vision for his church is nothing new. You don't even have to go to a conference or a seminar to find it. Because God speaks to us through his word. 
And when he does, we must obey what he says. Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. God speaks to us through his word. We must obey what he says. And we don't find God's mission and vision through a slick commercial campaign. It doesn't matter how creative we are. We can know God's mission and vision for us because God speaks to us through his word. We must obey what he says. The church is established on the word of God. And Jesus has promised to build and to protect his church. Our response is simply to trust and obey. Paul's message to the Thessalonians was not necessarily creative, but it sure was powerful. Why? Because the message was not his own. The message was from God. God speaks to us through his word. We must obey what he says. His word changes us inside out. C.S. Lewis said, Christianity is a statement which, if false, is of no importance. And if true, of infinite importance. The one thing it cannot be is moderately important. Verse 13, the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe for you Brothers and sisters became imitators of God's churches in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. What if Paul was here in our day and he said it this way. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Christ Jesus that are at Argyle. God speaks to us through his word. We must obey what he says. His word changes us inside out. It's the word of God who works effectively in those who believe. He changes us. For you, brothers and sisters, become imitators of God's churches in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. Paul was thankful. Paul was thrilled that the Thessalonian church received The word of God. They were growing spiritually. And they were becoming more and more like Jesus. The church is established on the word of God. It's the word of God that changes us from the inside out. So can we trust the Bible? Is the Bible trustworthy? In his book, Seven Reasons Why You Can Trust the Bible... Erwin Lutzer gives us seven reasons. Number one, a logical reason. The Bible claims to be the Word of God. Number two, a historical reason. History confirms the Bible's reliability. Number three, a prophetic reason. Bible prophecies that come true, prove its truthfulness. Number four, a Christological reason. Christ himself affirmed the Bible's authority and its truth. Number five, a scientific reason. Science supports biblical creation. Number six, a providential reason. God's people By God's providence recognized the canon of scripture. Number seven. A personal reason. The Bible has the power to change my life. 
millions and millions of believers can testify something changed in their life. The Word of God changed my life from the inside out. When Jesus healed the blind man, the church got all upset because they were convinced that Jesus was just a sinner. In John 9, 25, the blind man who was healed said this, whether or not he's a sinner, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind and now I see. The Bible has the power to change my life because it is a supernatural book. God speaks to us through his word. We must obey what he says. His word changes us inside out. The Christian life is so much more than accepting Jesus. The Christian life is following Jesus. Would you take that first step and follow Jesus and be baptized? Now, this is what your pastor believes about the Holy Scriptures. This is what the church at Argyle believes about the Holy Scriptures. We believe the Bible, consisting of the 66 books of the Old and New Testaments, is the inspired Word of God. Men were moved by the Spirit of God to write the very words of Scripture. Therefore... We believe the Bible is without error. We believe that the Bible is the sole authority for our faith. And that all we need to know about God's redemptive plan for humanity is contained in it. And no matter what our culture believes. And no matter what our culture demands. We must stand for the authority and the truthfulness of the Holy Scriptures. May God help us. God bless you.